Hi, everybody. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm here really to talk about this course called uh, Magic Windows and Mixed Up Realities. And this is a um, semester long uh, course on augmented reality. Uh, it's currently just finishing the first year running at ITP, the Interactive Telecommunications Program uh, at uh, NYU. And the reason for this course to exist is that it came from a conversation of really looking of uh, and talking about augmented reality and how most of the courses that we found were really structured mostly on the CS side and really computing and understanding, you know, mostly the you know the algorithms and you know the vision and the computer vision. And we wanted to do something really different and really exploratory about augmented reality. So that's uh, what we created. And um, we we take you know in you know streaks of one or two weeks. We explore a theme, we discuss it, we do readings, we discuss it further, we sketch, not only on paper, digitally and with code, and we ended up building a really quick experience. When I mean we, it's me and the students all together, separate. So through a semester, we expose the students to um, a lot of tools. Uh, the reason for this is not really to go crazy and drive them nuts, even though we do, but really to give them a language that they can use to make anything possible. And when we look at augmented reality, we try to look as the handheld, as a prototyping tool, as not as the end or the final solution, even though most of the times it is. And if you want to launch something now, you'll probably use the handheld uh, form factor. What we really try is to think of what if we didn't have a handheld device. What if it wasn't even a wearable? What if it was, you know, overlaid, blended on our brain, on our eyesight directly? So, through the semester, we go through the themes. Um, you know, we look at objects and how we can, you know, be inspired by animism and bring consciousness into into the objects, and really, you know, how we, you know, even playing with pareidolia and how we see faces in, in sometimes in objects and how we can bring that as a tool to create interactions. Um, and that like, you know, drives us a lot into assistance and augmented self or you know, really augmenting the city and exploring the city by using their data. And because we're based in New York City, it's great that we have the open data and a huge amount of databases. And then we, of course, we explore spatial storytelling and using the spaces, you know, like pages of a book or uh, collaboration, telepresence, and you know, recreating, you know, feeling of being far away but so close, and of course, time traveling and portals. Even though, in the end, which I suppose would be one of the biggest um, themes, it actually turned out to be the smallest. Um, so I'm going to show you a few projects from the students, and I'm going to be really quick because nine minutes is nine minutes. I already talked a lot, and I really want to focus this on the, stu the students' work and how much they they've accomplished. Uh, please bear in mind these are prototypes. These are one week long, sometimes two week long prototypes, but they did uh, you know a great job. So on assistance, I like to bring you know the genie assistant and how Ji Young created this you know really interesting. Uh, assistant, you know, living on a wearable, and that can really help you out, understand context, and how quickly, when it understands your physical space and has access to it, can jump from your wearable into the physical space and be contextual and relevant to the actions you need. Uh, and that is, you know, the genie assistant. Or how can we actually also bring assistance to, uh, to the, the kitchen and the refrigerator? So Swapna, and you know, it, it's actually cut, I didn't know this, but so Swapna Joshi, she did this project where she really explored the, you know, the assistant inside the refrigerator. It tells you what items are really, you know, going rotten or are fresh or are ready to go and what else can you cook with them? What can you bring them all together if you have like, you know, eggs that are, you know, the do that is closed and you have other, other, object, other uh, ingredients, what you can make out of them. But also, we also explored less, um, or a little bit more dystopian realities. If you have you, your assistance inside your wearables, what happens when you have access to information that you would not, normally not have? Yes. 
<laughs> How does this impact your life now? So, <laughs> yeah, that's on purpose. Um, so, Anastasis and or um, were together on this, and what they, they really explored was a set of, you know, not only face detection, obviously, but also, like, understanding what is the usual age of, you know, of someone or the, the life expectancy of someone in a certain age, and they played a little bit with that to give you a sense. And, of course, the data is not, like, 100% reliable. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then we explored objects, and from objects we explore in many ways, like I told you, animism, but also augmenting interfaces, looking at the native construct or the native artifact and augmenting its actions, its possibilities, or even invoking other actions, invoking other interfaces into separate, uh, into other uh, possibilities in the separate interface. So with uh, Amanda Lee did this interactive watch, which is just a wearable piece. It's non-digital at all. It's just a printable, a 3D printable that you can wear on your wrist. And by looking at it, you can, you know, surface the right information or the information you want, you know, with with um, invisible interface. Um, but also, one of my favorite parts is really when you look at objects and you give them life. And I think uh, the project I'm going to show you again speaks for itself on that. Oh, hello there. Hi, I'm Michaela McCullough. And I'm Jillian the Soap. What a nice name. Thank you. What's up? Not much. I'm just holding liquids, as usual. Tell me more about yourself. I'm slippery when it's wet. It was great meeting you. Let's hang out more. <laughs> Yeah, so this is amazing work, again, uh, from Anastasia Germanidis, uh, together with Roy Lev. And what they did was, you know, they used V40 to understand and recognize the object, and then they, they created a system for a gener generative uh, dialogue. So every object will create a different dialogue with uh, all the other ob possible objects. Uh, we also explored augmenting the city. And like I told you before, you know, <laughs> New York is perfect for this. We have so much data, and it's open data, it's generated, or it's um, accumulated, aggregated by the city, and you know, gave it to us in super sweet APIs to explore. So, Gal Nissim did this project last year, where she goes to the street, and she basically, by looking at a very specific street, she shows uh, St. Mark's, so if you're from New York, you'll understand why. Um, but she, by looking with her phone to you know, the, the, the places, she will place a mouse if there's been, you know, any um, mice found in the API, I guess. Not in the restaurant, just the API, of course. But also, uh, another project that's really interesting is the Trash Cyclone from Mint. Um, Mint Moriah, what she did was really pull the data from the, the amount of trash that's been put out in, you know, by people or collected in, in the street in each, each zone and separated by type of trash, which the API gives you that you know, for free. And then she creates, as you walk around in that zone, a cyclone of trash that will basically not only follow you, but kind of hug you. Um, so, and then, of course, we had to explore uh, directions and explore in the city. The White Rabbit from uh, uh, Jin Young uh, basically will take you to uh, Speakeasy. So that will be its, it's uh, rabbit hole. And then there's this guy who follows you around. I still don't get it why, but he's there. So it's really interesting how we can take storytelling and narrative and use that as a service to take you somewhere else. And speaking of storytelling and narrative, there's also an opportunity for expression, an expression in, within the city. We are so used to have the city talk to us, but not us to the city. We're so used to be exposed to ads, to logos, to things where we can't touch them. We're just being you know, uh, bombarded by them. So what happens when you can actually do that? Hey, it's Starbucks. You know, you could go to any coffee shop, but there is something about Starbucks. Well, here's a little secret. I hate this cat. And I hate this dog. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we can create soap operas in the city, and why aren't we doing that? 
But also, I think it's really relevant right now, another project that is an instant AR protest, protest generator. Okay, they are very quiet, very sound. <laughs> um, thanks, these are the students from the two semesters we uh, gone through the class so far. And uh, what are your plans for tomorrow? These are their plans. The same as every day. Try to take over the world. <laughs> All right, thank you.